In this video, we resurrect an old series of mine, Evy Metal Marines. If you're unfamiliar with Evy Metal Marines, it's a series wherein I try to paint a Space Marine, or Chaos Space Marine in this case, as close as I can to Evy Metal's painting style. If you're unfamiliar with what Evy Metal is or what their style is, check out the first video in this series where I describe it. With the release of 8th edition and the new Dark Imperium starter set, we have some pretty sexy minis to paint, and we're going to get started on some Death Guards. Without further ado, let's get rocking. We start with assembly. I clipped away the major parts of Flash and started to remove mold lines. Some of the mold lines are on rounded surfaces. In situations like this, I like to use a flexible sanding stick to remove the mold line. Then wet sand the area with 600 grit sandpaper to make it nice and smooth again. If I were to scrape this line away with an X-Acto knife, you may end up seeing a plateau because a blade is straight whereas a flexible sanding stick can conform to the surface. I then scrape away the rest of the mold lines with a knife. In order to avoid incurring the wrath of the internet, I also drilled out the gun barrel. In order to avoid a wandering drill bit, I set a little hole with a sharp pointy tool that I have and then drilled into that hole with my Dremel. I then cut away more of this cylinder with my X-Acto knife and filed the hole smooth with a round file. I then glued them all together with Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. The glue is interesting in the way that it works. You're supposed to dry fit the pieces together and then fill the gap with glue and it fills the gap and welds the joint shut. This works marginally and depends heavily on the size of the gap. You can also use it like a normal traditional glue as well and glue the pieces together before fitting them. During the assembly process, I also glued some pins into his feet with super glue and attached them to a piece of cork for easier handling. In true GW fashion, I undercoated the miniature black. I'm going to be painting on the first layer, so having my deepest, hardest reach areas as black is good because then it seems like a dark shadow. If it were white and I missed it with the paintbrush, then it would stick out like a sore thumb. If I was base coated with my airbrush, then I'd consider other undercoating options because airbrushes have an easier time reaching hard to reach spots. Additionally, this miniature has lots of metallic trim, so undercoating that with black will result in a better looking metallic when I come to that stage. I use an airbrush for our plumbing my primer here but you can use any tool you like. The first step in the painting process is the base coat. I decided to start with the largest spot of color which is the Death Guard Marines armor. For my base coat I chose Death World Forest, a GW base paint. I'm applying the paint with a size 1 Winsor & Newton brush and will use that brush for the majority of the video except for a few cases in which I will mention. This paint has pretty good coverage but will need at least two coats to get a nice opaque layer over the black undercoat. The next part you're going to hate, and it's called panel lining, and you would do it with a 50-50 mixture of Death World Forest and an old color from Citadel called Scourge Brown. Dryad Bark works here as well. The idea of this is that it's a replacement to using a wash. It takes a lot longer to do, but produces a highly accurate and deeper outlining of all the details. In this case, I took a size 0 from Broken Toad and essentially ran a line in all the debuff recesses around all the details. Don't forget to fill in all the pock marks on the armor too. At the end of the process, you will likely need to go back in with pure Death World Forest and fix up some mistakes like this. But once you're done with that, you get a pretty nice heavy metal effect. It's about at this point that you look at your base coat and it's a little bit too dark green when you compare it to the box art and the paneling color is a little bit too brown. And then you look into what Games Workshop actually sells and makes and you figure out that there's a paint literally called Death Guard Green. And frustrated and sad, you go to the closest hobby store that is near your house and you buy the right color, sadly, to rebase coat the miniature and restart the video that you are trying to show to the internet. You go so far as to make a little clip showing the right paint compared to the wrong paint, only to realize that you bought the exact same paint again, but in Citadel Air Form. These are all crucial steps that you have to follow. If you don't follow them, you will not get the same result as me. After this monumental failure, I decided just to suck it up and uh, <laughs> stick with the original base coat that I had. We're going to add some more scratches and gouges to the armor. We'll take our panel lining color and add random slashes and little holes around the armor. 
Now we're on to a step that's almost as frustrating as panel lining, and it's called edge highlighting, and heavy metal artists are all about it. Our first edge highlight is going to be a 50-50 mixture of Death World Forest and Screaming Skull. Work around the model on lining the protruding details with this color. Also, all those scratches and gouges we added need an edge highlight as well. Place the highlight on the underside of the scratch. This will give them a nice 3D effect. If you need help with edge highlighting, I have a video specifically about that technique. Click the eye in the top right hand corner for more details. After this edge highlight is complete, we'll do another one with Pure Screaming Skull, trying to create even thinner lines and cover less of the edge. I understand this can be really difficult, and I myself struggle with this, but give it your best shot. Using a thin brush can help a lot here. We're starting to get somewhere. GW's Death Guard have a little bit of a color variation in their armor. It's like rain is catching in certain parts of the armor and causing it to rust, or that's just Nurgle's default state, decaying. We're going to accomplish this with glazing using chestnut ink. Now you don't need to go out on eBay and find chestnut ink. You don't even need to find an ink. You can use any color you want to use, as long as it's a brownish reddish color. You essentially want to water down the paint, especially for inks which are quite potent. You then want to load your brush up, dab off the excess as a paper towel, and then apply it to your miniature. Your brush stroke should move towards the area where you want the effect to be strongest. You let that layer dry and continue to do it over and over again depending on how thin your glaze is until you have the effect that you want. And just like that, we have some nice rusty spots. The thinner your glaze is, the more layers of paint you're going to need to apply, whereas the thicker your glaze is, the faster it'll go. Next, we'll work on the metallics. We'll base coat the trim and other various details, Balthazar Gold, and we'll do the silver parts with Iron Breaker Silver. After that, we'll shade all the metallic parts in Army Painter Strong Tone. You can use any brown wash you want here. I want the silver bits to look a little brown, which is why I'm picking this over a black wash. Once we're done with that, we'll start layering the bronze bits with a 1 to 1 to 1 mixture of Stormhose Silver, Retributor Gold, and Balthazar Gold. After this layer is complete, we'll then mix in more Stormhorse Silver, something like 3 to 1 to 1, and do an edge highlight.
Once we've completed that, we'll move on to edge highlighting the silver bits with Stormhole Silver, and then we're done with the metallics. It's important at this time to go and change your water. You'll likely have a bunch of little metallic pigments floating in the water, and when you use this water to thin your other non-metallic paints, those little pigments get in there and they'll create little sparkles in your base coats where you don't expect them to be. This issue is very hard to fix other than by just base coating over something, so make sure you clean your water now. We're going to work on the black bits, which are the tubing to the mouth and the casing on the gun and the hair of the skull on the back. We'll start by base coating these details with Abaddon Black. We'll need to do a few thin coats of this to build up a nice opaque layer. After this, we'll edge highlight with Ashen Gray. Once we've complete that, we'll take our old foundation paint, Astronomic and Gray, and do a final edge highlight. This is just a brighter gray. Mixing white into your etching gray would also work too. Don't be afraid to go back with black and tidy up some of the edges, especially on the tube detail. Now we'll work on the fun, nerdly, bulbous bits. We'll start with the base coat of Nagaroth Knight. After this, we'll layer it with a 1 to 1 mixture of Nagaroth Knight and Warp Fiend Grey. We'll follow that layer up with a layer of pure Warp Fiend Grey. Finally at the end, we'll do an edge highlight of 1 to 1 Warp Fiend Grey and Pallid Witch Flesh. Also for added grossness, hit up this detail with a gloss varnish to make it look nice and juicy. Now onto the two leather bits. We'll start with a base coat of 1 to 1 Mephiston Red and Abaddon Black. After this, we'll do an edge highlight of pure Mephist in red. Also, apply these first two layers to the lenses of the eyes. When applying the pure Mephist in red layer to the lenses, focus on the bottom left-hand portion of the lenses. For the leather elements, we'll do a final edge highlight of 1 to 1 with Fitz and Red and Kiss Leather Flesh. For the final portion of the eyes, we'll do a final layer of Blazing Orange, followed by dotting the eyes in the bottom left hand corner and the top right corner with pure white. We'll now work on the last painted elements of the miniature, the skull on the back and the weird tube cover thing. We'll base coat both elements in Rakkar's flesh. We'll shade the weird tube cover thing with purple wash, like Leviathan purple and then edge hide it with Pallid Witch Flesh. 
Making little lines perpendicular to the tube can make it look like the tube is fluted, which is gross, and gross is what we want. For the skull, we'll shave with Griffon Sepia, and then reapply Rackard Flesh as a layer, and then mix some white in the Rackard Flesh for our final layer. Now on to making the base. Firstly, I attach the base to a piece of cork so it's easier to hold. After that, I apply a few rocks with some super glue and expedite the drawing with some quick set. This is my new favorite thing. But then I apply some undiluted PVA glue to the base and shake out some fine dirt through a stocking that my wife will no longer be needing onto the base. This is simply dirt from my backyard that I've dried and ground up in a crappy blender. Once that's done, I'll apply some more PVA glue randomly and then dip the whole base in the dirt mixture to get some variation. Once that's done, I dampen the whole surface with a 1 to 1 mixture of water and isopropyl alcohol and then apply scenic glue to it. The alcohol layer makes the scenic glue have a nice capillary effect which soaks into all the details and when it dries, it keeps it down nice and rock hard. I'll have a few resources in the description of this video for making your own scenic glue. After that, I base coat the base with Xandri Dust, followed by a wash of Iron Painter Strong Tone. After that, we dry brush the elements with Xandri Dust again and then very lightly with Screaming Skull. We then pull the miniature off its cork plinth and snip the pin shorter and use some black paint to determine where the pinholes would go and then drilled them out and stuck the miniature to the base permanently with super glue. Next is the most important step in the basing process and that's paint the damn base rim. It makes me so salty when I see a nice miniature that doesn't have a nice painted black or whatever color you want base rim. Finally, this isn't something that Epic Mail does per se, but I can't resist it. We applied some dry pastels to the base around the feet to make him look nice and dusty. And with that, we're done. This was a long and somewhat tedious process, but the result is definitely great. Looking back on the miniature, I'm sad we used the wrong green color, but it still turned out nice. Enough about painting this Death Guard, let's check out a mini person's model. Do it lie, yeah. Love do it lie. Miniature submissions. Let's do Ed Vinyarik. Ed Vinyarik, the pictures aren't even loading fully, and the first thing I'm telling you, dog, is you gotta learn how to white balance your photos. I'm sorry, I am, I'm a stickler. All right, we got some, we got some Cadian tanks. They look really nice and weathered and just like beaten up like tanks should look. Some cool de decal work. I see the the dirt work on the plow and along the tracks. That's really cool too. Like there, there isn't just paint there; it's also added texture. And that's always cool. I also like how he put paint over the decal to make it look like it belongs more in the scene as opposed to just applying it and leaving it there, which is something that I would totally do. We got some Ogrins too. They look pretty awesome. I love Ogrins. Those models are just freaking cool models. Thanks for the submission, Edvin. Edvin? Edvin, yeah, that's your, that's your name. Okay. Thanks for checking out my video about painting this Death Guard Marine. If you enjoyed it, I have two other videos, an Ultramarine and a Salamander video that are the exact same style about how I would paint those chapters in an Evan Metal style you can check out. If you like the channel and want to support it, I have a Redbubble account where you can buy t-shirts and stickers of my logo. Subscribe or die, but most importantly, don't forget to PAY MY